get to design really beautiful interior spaces. And along came this uh, workspace for uh, a company called Reading Plus. They were formed in 1931, they're a family company. And the third generation CEO is a friend of mine. And he, um, he's also, like me, a Cornell grad of architecture. So he was a very active collaborator in the design. Um, his father and his uncles, they invented all these crazy scientific machines. Um, and basically what they do is they assess and improve reading skills. And in the pre-digital age, they, they did like this. And now uh, Mark's kind of taken it over and taken it into the, um, to the uh, software age. Uh, this is an old mill in Winooski. Until very recently, it was a machine shop. And uh, when Mark and I saw it, we were like, we want to keep this thing open. And I remember that when my partner and I did the Hagen McKenzie Mills in 1985 in the Burlington waterfront, and all the realtors came in and butchered up the space with, with you know, sheetrock and hung ceilings. But the problem was in keeping it open, his staff, none of them wanted it open. They all wanted private spaces. Uh, and they needed workspaces, they needed group workspaces. So basically the issue became how do we make an almost invisible architecture that fits in and keeps the, the power of the fabric. This is the mosque in Cordoba. And uh, it's always been one of my touchstones. It's, it's built over about four, four or five hundred years. It's a Roman, Christian, Visigoth, and more. Lots of recycled columns and materials and there's just this mesmerizing quality of the layering of the space. When the Moors got kicked out and the Christians took over, they blew out the center of this thing and built a big cathedral. And some of the interventions you can see here are, are pretty nice. They're very gentle and, and they go along with the fabric. Uh, and they don't overwhelm it, which is something that we wanted to do in this mill. But the cathedral itself in the center is kind of like a hack job, pretty much. They basically <laughs> pretty much destroyed what was there, so you know, it kept looming in my mind. It's like, oh, are we going to get a mesmerizing space, or are we going to hack this mill in Winooski up, just like they did in Cordoba? <laughs> the plan is actually pretty simple. You, you enter from a bridge here on the left, taking advantage of all of the windows is where all the office and uh, H&M workspace is. So there's a reception area. The little museum that you already got a hint of is here conference room and a big lounge area with a kitchen, which also serves as a, a big meeting room. So when you stand in the main space of the entryway, you can see the museum, you see through into the conference room, and you begin to get a hint of the space as it goes into the, uh, into the main workspace. And so this space is both really centered, but it also has a kind of centripetal force to it where it begins to leak out towards the edges. In the main space, what we did is we established a datum line at five feet of solid, and then uh, this floating beam, another datum line that goes all around at seven feet, the uh, door height. And in between, we filled it with butt glazed glass. So there's, there's no joints, there's no mullions, and there's no caulk between them. And so this begins to give you a little sense of how the new got layered in with the old, so that the old is still beating through, it's still pretty strong and powerful. Um, and yet you begin to see the new little lines and the ductwork and the lighting and they all begin to begin to um, work together into a new thing. Now, you know, it might not be quite the mosque of Cordoba again, but, um, but still, when I go into that space, it has a slightly mesmerizing quality to it that you can feel the old and the new, they each have their own distinct quality and yet they come together to make something that is, um, that is unique in the sense that they inform each other and talk to each other. They're distinct and yet there's a third quality. This is where the 20 seconds gets long and I should have prepared a joke. <laughs> we'll, be, we'll be moving ahead to some new stuff as we come, come after this one. So this is one of the actual workspaces. Uh, this is where Mark's office, and this is the, all these photographs were taken by Gary Hall, presented earlier tonight, and he did a, a really great job. This one was done by me. You can see there's still all the mess and stuff like that. But it gives you a sense of how you have your own private space, and yet you feel open and connected to both the uh, rest of the space and the, uh, the overall fabric. For the, the rest of the space, the, the, what I just showed you was all very kind of muted, natural colors. 
Um, these are the company colors from their logo. And so from this lobby where we did the museum, color begins to come in uh, as, a, as a different way of reacting to the fabric. Mm -hmm. And then the museum is out here. This is the conference room. And so the museum actually kind of slides through and continues on this back wall with more amazing sci-fi gadgets that should have been in the TV show Lost as part of the Dharma Initiative. <laughs> um, but pay attention to the carpet because we're going to see a detail of that in a minute. Um, and then this is the lounge area um, with the kitchen. There's supposed to be a pool table here. I don't know what happened with the foosball because I think the, the foosball players are probably hitting their head on the lamps because the pool table is so much bigger. But Mark says that someday they'll get a, a pool table in there. Um, and this beam over here, pay attention to that too, because that'll show up again. This is a detail of the carpet. It's all made up of alphabet of letters. So it's, it goes along with the idea of a company that is trying to improve reading, that the carpet is actually made up of the alphabet. It says the word Zen right here. I never saw that until it's very second. But I love this carpet. It's carpet tile, and it can be put together in all sorts of interesting ways. Now, when, when it was a machine shop, they had a lot of the machines hung from the upper beams, and so these beams were leftover scraps from the, uh, that hung the machines. So we decided to actually use them to recycle them to become part of defining the space, defining the seating area. So there it is in totality. Uh, I just want to thank Sydney Ely, who was our color consultant on this. She worked to work with the company Color colors that you see over here, and then expand them into some other deeper tones. And of course, Gary, uh, the photographer, and Mark, who was just you know, right with me all the way as a collaborator. Collaborator, it was quite good. Thank you.